comfortable environment could elicit some amount of stressful doses into one's system. It is for these reasons that community development associations and community development committees in Lagos State are partnering with the state government to help themselves at the same time help the government. Welcome to another episode of Lagos Community Updates. I am Adejoke Shodende Adeyonju. How is your community faring today? Let's see. both the good and bad days but it is the continuous efforts towards building a better Lagos that has seen the city grown into the fourth largest economy in Africa economic transformation is a veritable tool that have direct impact on the city its people its landscape as well as its look this forms an essential part of the quest for the city's soul. From the high tourists on the island to the busy lifestyle in the mainland, this court towards growing Lagos economy binds Lagosians together. But what exactly is the motive of Lagos residents, especially those at the grassroots and communities? that drive these developmental and economic rejuvenation spirits. My quest for answer to these rhetorical questions made me and my crew embarked on a journey to one of the communities in the state. Oshiru Heritage Estate Community Development Association is situated in Nikosi Sherry Local Council Development Area of Lagos State. A unique community of vibrant champions, flanked by Bega on the west and Arepo on the east along Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Oshiru Heritage CDA houses more than 5,000 residents on a 300 builder plots of land. Sharing close proximity with Ogun River and having to battle with flooding in time past, they share with me the Komuna story. Coming in here, we are not without challenges. Because we were very few, there were these threats. It was such that at night we don't sleep. Because we were very few and dispersed, at night these robbers would come and uh, harass us. So the major challenge we had was security. There were no roads. The also, the people that came in managed to get breeders to do a passable road up to where they built. And uh, at that time also, because this place was a typically swamp, it was such that when the rainy city comes, development will stop until the next uh, dry season. Now, because of the uh, collective efforts of people who bought in land, we started uh, working to ensure that in all seasons development will be still going on. I want to know why I do boy. One second, boom, you see my low water wall. Tori owes me my dawa lamb. Me, I do boy. Once I say I can't see your way, I've got a much been moving. For a community in constant battle with over flooding, one would have thought having access to portable water would be easy. Some people have started living in the estate before they moved in, but we have bad road, we have bad, you know, we don't have light, we don't have a good drainage, so, yeah, so we don't have water. We normally go out to buy water, tank, we tank our water every, almost every, every week. So, and that caused a lot of, but the life was so expensive at the beginning here. So, and that's what, really make us to come together as a nested to 
from his synergy. But now the narrative is changing. The community is on the verge of completing its mini water project and has also put in place deep well facilities for its inhabitants. We started from a private uh, water scheme and uh, as we continue growing, we discovered that that one cannot meet up with the number, the population. And that was why we embarked on this, uh, the last government embarked on this project. And um, since uh, they, they commissioned the water and our people are enjoying, but when we came on board, we discovered that we really need to improve on the infrastructure that we met. And that necessitated us having additional four boreholes and that is what has really, and so when you ask people in the community now, they, they, they are really enjoying the flow. In the next few months, we'll be able to embark on the elevated water tank, the braised with tank, so that we'll be able to fill the community by gravity. For the water to serve its purpose, there is need for constant electricity. This necessitated the purchase and installation of two 500 kV egg transformer and purchase of over 100 electricity poles within the community. At the time we came, there was no light. So we were tapping light from the estate at that time. But at one time, they became hostile and cut us off. So it was a major challenge for us. So it became another major uh, project we embarked upon. And today we can tell you, we are self-reliant, uh, uh, dependent. We were able to secure uh, the first transformer that gave those of us who, who started initially and we secured another one. And I'm sure the President Esco is thinking of getting another one to fully get us settled. So, light electricity was one other major uh, milestone. This uh, drainage is the major drainage from this estate. It collects water from LSDPC estate down to our estate and then we discharge to the Ogo rivers. But we, put, we have to put uh, this uh, non-return valve in place to guide against the flood because we always experience flood at every 33 years when they open on your dams in a far away in your state there. So when the water, when the river flow, it will flow into the estate and this is the route we normally pass. So we have to put non-return valve to, to seal up the water. Got the transformer, got all the poles, the lights, started filling the road because we didn't get any gutter. If you see the gutter there, it wasn't the gutter. We just now started filling and raising the profile of the road from the gate all the way down to the very end. Did a lot of work. We are always bringing graders to grade it and um, gradually the road appeared. It was not safe initially. We were robbed regularly but we put ourselves together, got arms, got security men because the boundary there is a the river which was which made it safe but on the other side we had this um, outside that was coming from there. So. We started getting us to get OPCs, secure the place, and gradually with time people started coming in and um, we have a very vibrant community now. From paving the six kilometer community road with interlocking stones to having a functional security apparatus to safeguard lives and property, beautification of the estate entrance to lighten up streets within the community, residents add this to say on how they are able to pull resources together to achieve a common goal. Our source of fund has always been from yeah, the self-help initiative that has always sustained the Oshiro heritage people. We have a different revenue platform through which we fund our projects. We have uh, the 1 million Naira for development levy. We have uh, 100,000 Naira for electricity and transformer intervention. We have uh, 130,000 uh, levy for water. And we have a, a security due that we pay annually. So it is true that uh, means that we pay our estate gate, uh, uh, security, our OPC that's patrol at night and day. It's not compulsory that you have to drop the said amount, the one million at a goal like that. We do it in such a way that peace me, whatever you have, you pay. And with the keeping of good records, you understand, we don't have issues. Because in all organizations, you will accept with me that finance, owo, kudi, used to create a lot of problems. For our estate, but because of the records are always there, you understand, we don't have problems. That is why you see when people put in their money and they see what the money is doing, they do not. Little wonder on December 22nd, 2020, at Police College Playground in Ikeja, 
Oshoro Heritage CDA was the judge overall best CDA of over 4,000 CDA in Lagos State. The winner from Eco Sea Sherry Oshoro Heritage CDA. <laughs> This recognition by the state government motivated these young and vibrant community leaders to do more. Your guess is as good as mine. We thank the Lagos State Government for their, their contribution and their award, and we always want to work with them. Like, when we have issues, they, they respond quickly to us. And we also, as a community, talk to ourselves to make sure that tenement rates are paid regularly. People pay, pay their taxes because we understand that all these are other things that we need to do to help the government to help us. We are far from the center, but we are feeling their impact and we are so grateful to them for all they've always added to us in getting this far. On behalf of the Osharo Heritage Estate people, I want to appreciate the Lagos State Government once more. Governor Babajide Shamolu, we extend our appreciation especially to you, sir. We are so, so grateful to the, to the state government. What they have done is to encourage us to do more. And probably, and probably also to encourage the others. And because truly, you cannot depend on government for everything. Truly, truly. I mean, their, their resources are scarce. I mean, you have, uh, and they have so much to. So if you say you are waiting for them, that means you may never get there. And thank God we have a government that is responsible, a government that also appreciates the collective individual efforts of estates to upgrade. After all, the government has a lot to benefit. Now that this place has uh, upgraded, they can come here and begin to think of various levies that is used to the state government. So it's a symbiosis thing. They benefit and we benefit. I want to extend our appreciation to the executive governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Samuolu. Also, we have also promised and will always want to work together with the governor and the team of uh, Lagos State to ensure we work for a greater Lagos. Lagos. Every community needs basic amenities for habitable condition. While some are expectant of government intervention, others are not relenting in helping themselves to help the government. For helping community, you are helping yourself. If you have ability to do things, do it. As community stakeholders continue to contribute their quarter in the development of Lagos State, Governor Babajide Songwolu is working tirelessly to provide needed infrastructure and amenities while also supporting community initiatives for the benefit of all. Watch Lagos Community Updates on Wednesdays and Saturdays on this channel from 7 to 7.30 p.m. as we bring to your view accounts from various communities across Lagos. Lagos Community Updates, telling the story of your community. of good and motorable roads can't be overemphasized in the development of a society. Also, the management and control of free flow of traffic pose a major challenge to most cities of the world. Solving this requires ingenuity of the government and its agent to boost commercial activities of the state and nation. Rehabilitation of roads 
It's true. I mean, we cannot begin to talk about traffic management or control if we are not rehabilitating the roads. You know, in my first executive order, we said it's total ban on operation portals. We have appointed a new general manager for the Lagos Public Works Bureau. So we have just recruited the place. They will bring all of the things they require. In actualizing one of Governor Sawolu's team's agenda to transform the center of excellence, members of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation have been on Lagos Road throughout the year. Their duty is to tackle the most vulnerable part of Lagos Road, costing Lagosians man hours spent on a daily basis. Ikotun and Ejibo are typical examples of areas which have benefited from the state government's road rehabilitation. Lagos Community Update visit two communities in Ikotun, Godo and Ejibo Local Council Development Area to see how the road rehabilitation has helped them. This road from Mushi down to Ikotun here, from Yanokwaja down to Ikotun here, from Igondo. Down to Kotun here or Igegun, down to Kotun here. Ikotun is in center of this our Ikotun Igondo local government. is in center. Ikotun is a noble community in Lagos State. Many say it is the center of Alimosho, the most populous local government in the state and Nigeria. This road comes from Yanokwaja and the, this road goes to uh, uh, gone. Moving down to a uh, uh, and all the other side, even by that grid, you can connect it there. So many people dodge, go slow in another area to pass this place. This is a commercial nerve. This central, this roundabout is a commercial nerve, and business is going on the way it's supposed to be. And this, uh, before the construction of this uh, roundabout, which our governor did for us, for those who have left here for long, if they should come to Ikotu, uh, they say, wow, this is a new, new Ikotu. So uh, there's a beautification here. And the business has become, becoming spring up every day and night. In 2019, Governor Babaji de Songwolu identified the Ikotu roundabout among the four roundabouts in the state, which called for removal in order to reduce chaotic traffic congestion caused when navigating. Months after the replacement of the roundabout, traffic congestion has reduced compared to what it used to be back then. In Ejibu, we gather that the daily road rehabilitation exercise of the state government has improved lives of residents. Ejibu is a highly residential area carved from Oshodi Isolo local government area of Lagos. Majority of its residents are under the middle class umbrella. The lifestyle of members of Ejibo community and its envirus is not too far away from that of the people of Ikotun, as both areas are at proximity to each other. Ejibo is highly residential. Uh, a lot of the workers in the state reside here, and it's for the middle class. So, and that makes it really stand out. We don't really have a lot of um, industries as we have in other places and uh, we are surrounded by water. Our lives are so peaceful. Like I said, we are local uh, ENA. We are law abiding. We pay our taxes. We respond, we respond, you know, to whatever anything that the government requests from us at a time when it's supposed to be. So we are law abiding people. You can connect anywhere in Lagos through Ibo. If the road was not fixed, not even, you will have seen a lot of uh, gridlock. But thank God the government has been able to do it for us and the road, uh, everything is moving uh, smoothly. It is the most uh, viable road that connects the community to all the neighborhood. And as such, the people who do businesses move towards, use this road to navigate to any other route they are connected. So it's a connecting road, you know. So being a connecting road, it facilitates the, the, the smooth running of businesses and also workers, civil servants who go to their work uses this road. So it's one of the, the most important road we have in the community. Ejibo is also one of the beneficiaries of Governor Sonwulu's road rehabilitation projects. 
Iano Ijigbo. NMPC Junction and Jakonde Gate are three major points that determine the flow of traffic in and out of Ijigbo. The three spots were given a new look which is a departure from what it used to be. Business has improved drastically because now you don't, you don't lose man hours bringing your goods in and out. You are coming from uh, my 2, my 12 or anywhere from Lagos to come and do business. You are not spending hours. We are especially people with uh, predictable goods. Now, if you, they, now they come freely and go freely and they are able to do their business without any, any interest. Residents say traffic has reduced to its barest minimum with commuters having easy ride home. We commend the effort to our uh, state governor, uh, Mr. Asanwolu, is the governor of the people by the people for the people. He's a governor that listens to the people and he has been listening to us, has been helping us here since he was on the seat. He came here, made Sophia, hold a meeting with all our community leaders here. So, and he promised us that he will do this runabout, and he did it, which we are preaching, and we commend his effort. He's a good governor. First of all, we have to appreciate the governor of Lagos State, His Excellency Governor Olushola Sowolu, for all what he has been doing in Lagos State. And particularly, most this is cartoon, what he brought to us in the cartoon. He has brought a very good thing to us in the cartoon which we believe we ease the traffic congestion in the Koto. Community leaders in Ejibo thank the governor for his intervention on their route and pray for the full actualization of Babaji De Songolu's team's agenda. They also call the governor to explore the waterways in Ejibo as an alternative means of transportation. Ejibo is surrounded by water or canal. If apart from road transportation, I also want to see the governor to look into water transportation. That will reduce the vehicular movement on, on roads. And you no, know, it will make a uh, journey, uh, journey very faster. You are going to island, you are going to my two, uh, my, my two. If you can connect by, by water, it, it, it's faster. And you know, the, the money being spent, the uh, resources, being spent on road will reduce because a lot of vehicles will not be removed from the road because the people will now go by ferry or whatever to their further destination. But first of all, I must say the government has done a good job and we are enjoying uh, uh, what they have done for us in the Jibo SDA. Our interest Involvement and commitment is required to take Lagos forward. We are mirrors of this great state. Let's join hands to take it to a greater height. With that, we wrap up today's episode of Lagos Community Update. Remember, you can join our social media platforms for comments and suggestions. And in case you have projects or programs going on in your community, do call the numbers on your screen. Do you also have someone that deserves to be our community champion? Don't hesitate to give us a call. I am Ade Joker, Shoden the Adenyoju. Remember, whatever you do, wherever you are, never ever work against Lagos because Lagos is yours.